Hello, Dawn Butler here, um, in the Katie Sue headquarters kitchen, um, to do a little live with you. Um, now, you may remember a little while ago, I set you a challenge, or rather that you could challenge me, in giving me any three moulds to do something with. Well, there were so many of you that replied, and actually we may go some of those suggestions as we go further on in the months to come. But the first one that I've picked was these three. So, Catherine Negus, well done. You selected the Carla Lily Mould, um, Nicholas Lodge one, the Basket Weave, and then the Sunflowers, um, again by Nick. Um, and we thought, could we do something a little fun with them? Well, you know me, I'm not going to do something probably that might be what you think. Maybe the first thing that you might think of is a basket with some flowers in it, but also anybody that knows me knows that flowers aren't the first thing that I would be making. So I want to take you through something a little different. I've also not made one up in advance in order that I keep you guessing to see what it is. So without further ado, let's get started. So I've got some cake under here. And what I've done is on a, I've got a 12 inch board and I've put on there an eight inch cake and I've ganached that over and you should be able to see that it goes narrower. If I, I can actually tilt it that way, look now, cause it's pretty solid, but it goes narrower towards the bottom. And actually what I've done is I've carved this upside down, if I flip it over for you. So I've carved it this way round slanting down from that eight inches and then ganached it over. I've then turned it upside down the right way round and then I've ganached over the surface as well. So that therefore would then be ready to go. And I'm firstly going to start with basket weave. Now, I'm just gonna wipe my hands as soon as I've now handled chocolate cake. And I've got here some ivory sugar paste, and then I've got our basket weave mould. I'm just going to dust that off. This one, though, being um, sort of more of an impression mat, is absolutely brilliant for just not sticking. It's superb. So very little is needed, really. Move that one out of the way as well. So it's more about as I'm rolling out on this surface that I don't want anything getting covered. Now, this is an ivory. You could leave it that way, or we could actually add a touch of modeling chocolate to it. So this is a dark modeling chocolate. I'm just gonna go with half that amount and put that in. You notice how when I'm kneading this together, look, it's like a twist and a pull. It's like you're wringing out a tea towel because actually it doesn't matter whether this is fully mixed or not. So we've got a shape of a cake that's like a basket and we've got a basket weave, what, mean weave a mould. Now I can hear you already saying, well that's not very imaginative Dawn, what are you doing with a basket? But it's where we take the rest of it. So what do you think we could put in our baskets? What do you think might go in there? Um, well, obviously I've got a sunflower mould and a Carla lily mould. So it might be nice for Mother's Day. I think that basket one is really rather underrated. So I'm rolling this to be, hopefully, the circumference of my eight inch cake. Now it doesn't need to be exact. The great thing about this mold is, is that you can do it in sections if you need to. So we've got our basket weed mold here and you'll notice that we've got the Katie Sue Designs logo on the top. Let me just center all of this so that you can see it a bit better. There we go. So what I wouldn't suggest that you do is put the mould this way round and as you impress, whilst it's lovely that it have Katie Sue written in it, not necessarily ideal. So we'll just take a section of it that is on the mat. 
Can you see how I'm just teasing top and bottom so that hopefully that's the right length? And what I've already checked this on is the height of that cake, just to make sure that it is actually enough on there. We'll start at one end and I'm going to very gently press down all over. Now you could be trying to make sure that this is nice and even. We could be using a cake smoother for this. Just get one of those out of my box. So that would make sure that I would press down equally. If you use a rolling pin, what you've got to watch is as you go and push and roll that it doesn't all splurge out the front and you lose the pattern on your um, impression. So I do try and keep it nice and level, but to make sure that I've got the impression all over, then a smoother is really good. And how detailed is that? It's absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna line the next one up and you should see that actually the pattern lines up really quite nicely. Just press it down to make sure it's gonna stay put for you. And then from there, you can really press. Now, it doesn't matter if you've not lined this up quite enough. It's a basket. It's got to join somewhere. But actually, look, can you see that pattern is just carries on from one to the other. And as you take this down the side, as you're looking down the side here as I'm layering it up, you can actually see where the grooves just sort of fit into each other. So it is really, really simple. So again, just give it that gentle press. Press it down. And you should be good to go. There we go. So we've done three of those sections. I could carry on, but just so that it's easy enough to see what it is that we're up to. Let's get rid of that for a minute. Let's get rid of that for a minute. Now, I want to pop this on my cake at the front. So you could go round, as I said, all the way round, or you could go round in sections. But I do want to make sure that the bottom is neat because I can't um, kind of tuck it under or get rid of it. So I'm just going to take my knife and because there are lines on the pattern for me to follow, then it's actually very, very easy for me to trim it up. Now I could also just get rid of that top, provided I know that I've got the allowance in height to do so. So don't tuck it away if it's not there. Now, when you're pulling out something that's got an impression on it, the last thing you want to do is um, lose that impression. I'm just gonna take this board and flip it round just so that I can get to the other side of the mould. You just make, need to make sure that this mould is free. Those metal scrapers are really good for this. Palette knives are really good for this. Just make sure that it's free. The last thing you want to do is ruin all of that shape. So, just move that out of the way and put the cake back down. Pick something that we think might look all right for the front. We'll go with that, which I now need to put towards you. Gently pick it up and we should be able to just pop it around like so. Now, can you see the, now that we've got a lot of excess going on at the top? So we can either cut it or fold it and I wouldn't cut it with a knife if I needed to trim it I would cut it with a pair of scissors we should be able to just fold over the top like so and I'm just gonna look at the front of it and what I'm doing with my knife is packing round can you see I'm just going to take the underside of that knife and gently push that into the cake, like so. 
And then we should have, if I, I know it's only half done, but we should have, shouldn't we, our basket kind of ready to go, um, which is pretty cool. So I would probably do that again, and then my basket would be complete. Of course, we can airbrush it in a moment and really kind of bring it to life, but we'll do all the airbrushing together in one go. So let me just put that behind me for a moment. We'll see whether we knock it off, shall we? So that's my basket done. Just need to give my fingers a wipe. So they've got all sticky. Okay, so I think we're clear we've got something in a basket. What comes in a basket? Any ideas? We've said flowers. Anything else might come in a basket? About food in a basket. I rather like food in a basket. Do you know, I've not had chicken in a basket for years. Now we're not even going chicken though. Um, so don't get too excited. We are, however, going to do something else. Would it make it any clearer if I brought out these? So I've now got two six inch round cakes. They are single layers of sponge and they've both been covered in ganache. Now actually they're both the same even though they don't quite look it. But if I turn that one over that way round, can you see, if I bring them close to the camera, there they are. Can you see that they've both been slightly curved, that side, and obviously then I've ganached the whole way round. And if I turn these over, I've ganached the underside as well, just because we need to make sure that things are sealed. Now, the great thing about this cake is you don't actually need to be too smooth. So this one's a bit smoother than this one, but it really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's part of the reason that I make novelty cakes and not wedding cakes, basically, um, because we don't need to be perfect. Now, let me put one of those to one side. I'm going to put some corn flour down again, mainly just because I'm rolling out. And I'm going to take my ivory paste once more. Give it a bit of a knead. So I've bought this as an ivory colour. Um, it doesn't need to be though. I could have coloured it with some um, food colour gel or even added a little bit of that modeling chocolate just to take it from being too creamy colored. But maybe you've already got an idea that it needs to be the color of bread. So just rolling this out. Don't go too thin on these ones. We do need some depth for a little bit of texture. And I've only used half of the amount that I had in order that I can do both. Okay, so we're going to do this one first. Place it down. Over the top we go. Now these were ganached not that long ago, so I generally find I don't need anything else to make the sugar paste stick, but that's enough. But if you'd left them overnight, you may well do. I'm just gonna place my knife underneath the whole cake in order that I can pick it up. And actually, I'm now just going to fold it. Do make sure when you go to tuck, that your fingers are clean, that you've not just dragged ganache from the rest of the underside of that cake. And if you go to place it down, do make sure that your surface is also clean. And I can just fold like so Doesn't matter if it doesn't cover it all because it is going to be touching something else, but it does mean then that it is slightly covered over. Now I'm hoping now that it might be becoming very apparent as to what it is that we're up to. 
So what I want to do with this is just give it a few little markings. So I'm going to come in with the Dresden tool just up the side. Don't know whether you can see here if I do it at that top. Um, so coming round, look, just wherever there is a kind of crease. Can you see with the Dresden just putting in a few more lines and a few more creases? You can really kind of go in with your fingers too. Look, wherever, wherever there is, there's a ridge of that ganache. Just go with it. It's absolutely fine. Bring your finger in, look, across the top. Just gentle lines, just finding where the ganache is, giving it a few little marks and impressions. And again, gently lift it off the surface. And I'm just gonna pop this on a piece of paper towel and we'll put that to one side. Now, my particular piece of bread needs another piece of bread. So we've got another one to cover. So again, just getting my surface nicely dusted over, just because I'm dealing with a nice sort of polished wood surface so it can end up getting a little bit sticky. Now when you do the bottom of your burger, again you just want to make sure on that bun that you're um, covering it all over, that nothing's exposed to dry out basically. And it's up to you whether you cover it the same way round and your uncovered part is the middle where the filling is going to go or whether you end up covering it the other way around. So if you imagine one was domed, wasn't it? So remember that we've just covered the top one that was domed that way. Actually, if I turn that one that way around and then I go to cover it like so, it means that if there's anything showing when I go to put the filling on, I know that everything is covered and wrap it round. Far more robust than you think is cake. Doesn't matter if it's got creases in it. Wouldn't it be amazing to just be able to cover cakes like this all the time? Just giving it a squish down. So this time round, we're dealing with this as our inside. Fingers in there just to make those little grooves. And just kind of really make sure that you can't see any of those big creases and tuck marks. See how we've actually almost covered it over, haven't we? If we got a smoother to that and push that in a bit, we'd make a bit more, but it honestly doesn't need to take you that long. Put that on a clean piece. And we're about ready to use our next mould. So I'm going to bring our blue mat back in, like so. So if we can stick it down and keep it there, get rid of some of my rubbish. So what I've got here then is basically modeling chocolate. And I've probably got just over 500 grams of modeling chocolate. You could use less, you could use more. It is entirely up to you. You could make another cake, um, but I generally, um, quite often this tastes rather nice, so this is where I go with it. I'm just gonna check it against, yep, we're okay. Checking it against the size of the bun. And you're wondering where on earth these flower molds are coming into this. I know, I know, but, I want you to take a look at the middle of that sunflower. I have never seen a texture quite like it and I absolutely love it. In fact, um, Ian and I were discussing how um, I'd like to make that into a bumblebee body and I can see that being his head, a little hat and some wings and he's even got a tail look. 
So you may well see that I make a um, bumblebee out of this sooner rather than later. And I'm just going to use it as an impression just by literally folding the moulds in half and pushing into the modelling chocolate. Just making sure that it's gone all over. How much quick and easier is this? So, so, so simple. Doesn't matter that I'm getting the corners of the mould in there, look, because actually it just looks like part of that burger. I just want to make sure, I'm going to flip it over dead quickly, not to do the whole of the other side, but I want to make sure that I've gone around those edges underneath so that the impression doesn't stop. But how effective, look, is that as our beef burger? And it's done straight away, which is pretty superb. I'm going to put that again just on another piece of paper towel so that we can gain access to it in a bit. And whilst we've got our um, buns that are drying off, so before they get too hard, I want to do our third mould. And our third mould was this Carla Lily. And you're thinking, how on earth does that relate to a burger? Well, let's take the middle of that Carla Lily. Can you see the impression in here? It's absolutely superb. And what I'm going to do is gently press down across the top of my burger and it's going to leave me impression for where I'm going to put my sesame seeds. And it's just texturizing that bun to be a little bit baked. How cool is that? And again, really, really simple mold, just used as an impression, and it just gives you a great impression in just seconds, which is really, really fab. Now, the third bit, was this one. So we've used already our basket weave on the side on our basket. We've now used the sunflower mould on the middle of our cake, which is our burger. We then used the top of the Carla Lily to do the top of our burger. And we've got this section left of our lily pad, which will now do our lilies. And for this, we're going to use some wafer paper. So this is ordinary bog standard wafer paper. I know it comes in different thicknesses. Um, this one, can you see, look, it's relatively thin. Um, it wouldn't actually matter how thick necessarily it was. It just creates a little more work the thicker that it is. What I'm gonna do is tear it into pieces and I don't want any straight edges really. So can any of you tell what it is now that I'm going to do with this third mould? What might you put in a burger? Yeah, anybody that knows me knows that it will be nothing to do with flowers. So we're just tearing up our wafer paper like so. And we could leave it larger than that, it's absolutely fine. Now, I'm gonna airbrush these, and airbrushing, I would think, really is quite essential for this one. It's the best way to get that really good, um, really good detailing, and the fact that you're steaming it, basically. You're getting it wet. So I don't know what color I've had in my airbrush, so I need to make sure I'm all okay. I'm going to add some yellow in there first. So kind of half a cup of yellow. And then I'm going to add one drop of leaf green. Now in order to mix those colours effectively, I need to blow some bubbles. And by that, what I do is I block the end of my airbrush, like so, with the kitchen paper. And then I pull back the trigger. Can you see 
that there's bubbles in that cup and what that's doing is mixing my colour and there it is, my really vibrant green. What I now want to do is very gently airbrush one side of my wafer paper, the other side of my wafer paper, take my lily impression and I'm just going to fold it over. So it doesn't matter that it's only one side of a vein, I just need to impress it and can you see that it will now leave impression on it that is just like a lettuce leaf and because you've torn that paper, whoop, it's going everywhere, because you've torn that paper those outside bits of that leaf really really work for lettuce so I'm just going around the outside on this one um, I want those veins to be going downwards so I need to fold it this way and it's just a bit of a press down and can you see that it literally and where I've left it light in the middle look and then I can crinkle up the edges like so whilst it's still a little supple and there is our lettuce leaf. So we'll do a few more of those just so that we've got something to put in our cake. So round and round it goes and the other side. If you get it too wet you'll just find it'll just be a bit damp basically to just but it comes back to itself so just leave it alone. Give it the impression you might need to rest it somewhere to let it dry. But once it is dry it's absolutely fine so we'll just crinkle those up a bit more again going round the outside now you could use a darker green could come around the edges with a darker green that's absolutely fine and I just think though that a green on its own is almost too much so I go with this lighter green I'm just going to fold that in half that way flip it round just get that bit in there like so and then crinkle up a bit more you see how that one's just a little wet look you see how when it's crinkled it's just kind of crinkled onto itself so it's not a problem rip the end off re airbrush that end like so Put it back in my impression. There we go. There it is. Fixed. Dead, dead easy to fix. Really, really simple. I'll just tear this up so that I can make sure I've got lots of crinkle bits. So there, look, I've torn it in the middle. If I just airbrush up that side just there, it's enough that when I then go and press that, I've now glued it, look. You can see how I've changed the shape of that one. Okay, another couple of pieces. But I use NYX um, veiners all the time, all the time, even though I'm not even necessarily making flowers because I'm making things from nature. So whether that be vegetables or, like I said, these burger cakes where you need some lettuce on them, just so, so simple. But you see how the um, wafer paper is slightly translucent as it would be in the middle of our lettuce. So it makes a kind of massive difference. I'm just tearing those little bits up, look at the end. And you see how perfect is that? Don't worry about this bit where it's overspray too much, it'll end up in the cake or crinkle it like so and there it will be. One last piece. Let's dry off my board. Oh, run out of colour, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more green, blow those bubbles, always do that well away from your projects as well folks, don't go blowing bubbles all over the place, you could end up making an absolute mess as it pops over the top of your airbrush, and of course you end up in an absolute mess, look, I had clean fingers a minute ago. But um, everyone in the Katie Sue headquarters is used to seeing me absolutely filthy and covered in stuff, which is about right for me. There we go. But yeah, I love, love, love 
these large veiners. And it's a little something different to do with that lily. And the fact that it's got that other impression in there as well. Absolutely love it for that. It's brill, brill, brill. Okay. So, whilst we've then got the airbrush out, we ought to be adding a little bit of colour and shading, don't you think? To the burger cake itself. So, I've got myself a red board here. Let's turn that off for a minute. And we're actually going to put the basket on a red board. Let's get rid of that. So, we want it to be kind of near the middle. And as I said, we would be finishing that off as well. So that's where that's gonna head. I need to just, to save time, instead of you watching me wash out one, we'll just switch out the airbrushes. Again, I don't quite know what we've had in here, but I'm going yellow, half a cup of yellow, and then I'm going for one drop of brown. Give that a bit of a drop. I'm now needing to blow my bubbles, like so. And it gives me this teddy bear brown look, can you see? Which is just really nice to kind of highlight up any of this basket weave and it really does kind of bring it to life. So staying quite a good distance away, you don't want to come too close. The main problem for people when they're airbrushing is that they get too close and then they pull back the trigger too much, okay? When you pull back the trigger too much, what you do is you just put too much color out there. If you imagine that there's a needle in here and it's blocking a hole, and when I pull back the trigger, it pulls back the needle and makes the hole larger. So the more I pull back the trigger, the bigger the hole is for the color to come out. And if you're here, imagine how much color is coming out and where that's going on the side of your cake. Yeah, all the way down the side. So take it nice and gentle, take it nice and slow, and you should just be able to nice and gently kind of cover that cake round. And there is our basket already done. Now we could choose to be adding some more colour to that in a bit, um, but we'll leave it like that for now. We need to do the bottom of our burger. And in exactly the same way, it's part of the reason that I've got it on a piece of kitchen paper, in order that I can move it round, I'm just going to point horizontally. We should actually always be pointing down when we airbrush a cake. But because I want just the bottom, I'm going to airbrush horizontally around the bottom of here. And I should gently kind of toast the bun, as it were. Now, I'm not going to do the middle because that would be cut bread. So that would be lighter than the other basically. So that one can go to one side as well. And then we've now got our toasted top bun. Now, because I want to do just the top of this, I want to be pointing down at it. Can you see how my airbrush is moving around and around in a circle? Like so. And I'm pointing down. And because I'm pointing down, I'm missing the sides, can you see? So it ends up that you're not coating that other bit. Now I want to give it a touch more shading, so I'm gonna go for another couple of drops in brown. Blow my bubbles and check my color. Let's see what I think. Ooh, okay. I need to tickle this. I need to not go overboard. So if I very gently, you can barely see hopefully the color coming on but I'm just pulling back ever so lightly with the trigger and I'm only going now in the center. Can you see how I've left the outside golden and now I've just come in the middle with this center piece here. And then that on that top one will literally do me. I'm going to do the same again on that bottom by just gently, gently coming in at the very, very bottom. What I'm actually aiming for when I do it is the paper. So if I aim downwards at the paper, my overspray bounces back up and hits the side of the cake. So if you look, 
I'm actually pointing all the way down when I spray. And then you should see that you get that nice kind of tinge of colour up the sides. So that will about do me for that one. Now we can start to assemble our burger in a minute, but I'm just going to see if we've got any colour left. Yes, we have. This will do us. Because whilst we've got that brown in, I'm just going to roll out some sugar paste. Now it's quite thick. I want to roll it out a touch. And I don't want to go any thinner than that. So can you see, size-wise look, I'm really quite thick on there. I'm going to lock the ends off. And I'll probably cut it in half again. And I'm just going to cut it into strips. And then, just take those to one side. But I can actually just model them, make sure that the edges are nice and crisp. Let's turn that off. Maybe slant one end one way, slant the other end the other way. Does anybody think these look like chips? And not an essential part of this cake, but actually, you know, if you've got some sugar paste left, just shape it a few chips. I've got green on here. <laughs> they look like potatoes that are going off. And it's because we've had that lettuce on there. So I'm just making sure that the edges are a good shape. Like so. I'm going to put them on a piece of kitchen towel and I've run out of colour which is great because it means I can put more yellow in and a touch of brown. Remember we've gone a lot darker haven't we and I just want to lighten it up a touch because I don't want my chips to look like they're burnt. Blow my bubbles, check my colour. Now then, what I'm going to do is aimed directly at a corner and I'm going to go nice and close. Can you see how close I'm going? If I do all the corners that are facing me at the moment and by pointing at that corner I can start to build that colour up. I'm just going to go around all these edges to just literally put touch of shading on there and you can flip them over as well make sure that you get the other sides now loads of people say to me how long should I wait for my airbrushing to be dry well guess what <laughs> your airbrushing should always be dry you should never have to be waiting for something to dry. So whilst that's a very tiny portion of chips. I have got here some more wafer paper, like so. And I've got some strips of ordinary A4 paper. And I'm just going to place them like that. Now if I want them equal, I did kind of measure them as I cut them. So I'm going to put, if I put one there, the next one I'm going to place next to it. The next one I'm going to place next to it. And then I can take out the one in the middle. And then I'll put that one next to it. And then I can put that one just there and take out the one in the middle. Now when you airbrush with, she says moving it, look, honestly. When you airbrush with wafer paper, the issue that you have is that it doesn't stay still. So I need to secure it in place. Now I'm not taping the wafer paper. I'm taping the A4 paper either side. So can you see? 
So if I just move that back into the camera a little bit, there we go. So I'm literally taping that bit down. Now, we'll get another airbrush pen. Don't know what's been in this one. Oh, green. I'm gonna put some red in. There we go. Okay. So all I'm gonna do is go horizontally look across the paper and I'm making sure I'm pointing down. If I don't point down, what I'll end up doing is spraying underneath this paper, which may still happen anyway. May still happen anyway, but we'll see. And then, hopefully, I might be able to slide this out can I? From underneath, look. Ta-da! If I now slide it back under, can you see why once I've done it once, I don't want to have to do it again? <laughs> I'm going to go to there. I'm going to just put a piece of kitchen paper over this end, because I don't want to go that far just yet. And I'm going to go horizontally again. Try and just hold that bit of paper down. Again, I'm not going sort of mad with it, trying to keep it dry-ish. And again, hold it down. And then I may well be ready to slide down until we get needs to be there doesn't it now we've just lost that bit in the middle of that bit so let's put that a bit better down there we go and airbrush again and you can do as many of these as you like but we've now got ourselves a little gingham tablecloth look. So how cute is that? Now we could either put that under the whole cake or in this instance what I'm going to do with it is cut it into kind of triangles in order that I can lay this out of the basket like so. And then I find it goes further. What I'm looking at doing is just lying it down so that all of those edges are covered, like so. And we'll put some at the back and then you'd never actually know at this stage that I hadn't decorated the back of the cake, which is jolly good, isn't it? Right, we can get the underside of our burger like so that can sit on the top now i'm just layering this up and it's staying as it is but of course you're actually dealing with a two-tiered cake so if you're transporting this or it's going to stay like this for a period of time and you're getting heavier and heavier and heavier you would want to consider a board in between the two in order that you can tear it as a two-tiered cake so tier one and tier two um but as i said we're, um, we're just going for this one. And it's the modelling chocolate, to be honest with you, that's the heaviest. Now, do we put lettuce underneath the burger or lettuce on top of the burger? Is that like a um, when the, the, the Devon and the Cornish argue over whether it's jam or cream first? Is that what that's like? I'm just going to place my burger on the top. Try not to bury all of the lettuce. I can tuck some of that lettuce out there as well just make sure it's all kind of poking out like so now i've got here this is some modeling chocolate and i've colored it up with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange so it wasn't too kind of yellowy and can you see the funny texture that it's got to it Kind of looks a bit sweaty, doesn't it? Well, it's absolutely perfect for what I wanted um, because it looks like melted cheese. And what I've actually done is I've put it on this sheet of plastic in order that I could peel it off 
and then I have put it in the microwave and will you look at that is that melted cheese or is that melted cheese it's absolutely superb because modeling chocolate just melts exactly like cheese so I might just want that bit just there we can drape these bits off the side of course no one will see the actual middle or the top so we just want to make sure that we've got bits poking out the side like so then i can place the top bun on the top how cool does that look and how quick and easy was it folks i barely prepared anything other than ganashing those cakes up dead quick we're going to put these fries on so we can have those around the board we could put them in the edge of the basket but I think just around the front of the board like so and then one final thing I'm getting a ball tool and then I'm going to get some white airbrush colour and just so I don't make a mess on the table I'm popping it down into the back of a smoother it's just a surface that I can pick up on basically put my burger back in view I'm using the narrow end of the ball tool place it down and I'm just gonna literally dob on the top where I would want those sesame seeds to be now you could make sesame seeds out of tiny bits but you know what life's too short this is so much quicker, so much easier, and really rather fun. So, there you have it. We have used, very randomly, three Katie Sue moulds that you chose. Thank you, Catherine, for choosing these. And she chose, as a reminder, a basket weave. She then chose the Carla Lily by Nicholas Lodge and also the Sunflower and from that we came up with our basket of burger and chips. Now I don't know about you but I have thoroughly enjoyed going through the back catalogue of Katie Sue Design Moulds and allowing you choose three to set me a challenge so if you're up for it why don't we do this again. Until the next time though it's been me Dawn Butler for Dinky Doodle Designs and Katie Sue up at headquarters for our live random challenge of three moulds.